give the Lord a big hand. Please be seated. Also, all the ministers from the start has been phenomenal. Can we celebrate the Lord for everyone that has spoken that God has used since the conference began? I'd like you to know that we are not defeated. What we saw happen on Wednesday night is... That was Wednesday night, am I correct? Uh, Wednesday morning. What we saw happen on Wednesday morning is a picture of what must happen before resurrection. Wow. When I saw the video that went viral where pastor was speaking, in fact, someone had called me to say, are you aware of what is happening at the conference? You should be speaking. I said, no. And when I saw the video, while others saw chairs, I saw bones. And those who help me around know that the message was concluded before Wednesday night. I received a download. And when I saw the, this is what I was trying to tell pastor. When I saw the video, the Lord said, now you can tell I gave you the right message. It was bones I saw. What seemed to be, have been the ground was a valley. Literal opening of the eyes. And what we saw at the start of the program was the beginning of resurrection. I'd like you to sit tight. We won't do too much of teaching. A lot has been done. I mean, we've, you've probably heard the best of messages on the subject of the resurrection. But the Lord told me, he said, tonight is a prophetic night. Yeah. We will not just be teaching and teaching, we'll be speaking. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, before the next mercy conference, you will not look anything close to what you look like now. I'll be teaching on the subject of the resurrection, the valley of dry bones. The resurrection, the valley of dry bones. The greatest event in Christendom is the resurrection. And one of the greatest revelations to be unveiled before Jesus Christ returns is also the resurrection. Let me say it again. The greatest event in Christendom is the resurrection. We are not professing a faith that is built on the birth or just the death. But the birth, the death, and the resurrection. That's the greatest event. But God is saying through the mercy conference and speaking to our pastor about this. And seeing what we saw is enough proof that he heard from God. And God is saying, the greatest event is the resurrection, but let them be taught and shown the reality of what it takes for something to die and come back alive. For except a cone of wheat falleth to the ground and dies, it abideth alone. And no wonder Paul the apostle said that I may know him and the power of his resurrection. I never knew until Pastor Delia Oshumakine was sharing about the fact that the first book written, I think he said was First Thessalonians. The first book written, First Thessalonians, and was written by who? Paul. Yet Paul will cry that I may know him. And I want to know the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings. Hi, hi. Being made conformable unto his death. Until you are ready to die, you are not ready to rise. 
God wanted to shift the household of David. So it had to die. The building. Push <laughs> kabai. After every death comes life. In fact, there is a mystery. The mystery of life in death. So Paul began to exclaim that I may know him and the power of his resurrection. The same Paul will say, if that same spirit that raised up Christ from the dead dwells in you, because there are situations that will come your way that's as good as dead, that same spirit will quicken your mortal bodies. Sunday morning is coming. Mm. But between the death and the resurrection, there is activity. And so what we've been having from Wednesday night till now is activity. Tomorrow, celebration. Hmm. Let's not go too much into all of the expositions we have received so far. But please take this. A revelation of the resurrection reveals three things among others. Three things that he has revealed to me for now. Three things. Number one is that the resurrection is a person. And we had a lot about that. John eleven twenty five. I am the resurrection and the life. So when we talk about the resurrection that we've come for in this conference, it is an introduction to Jesus. Is somebody catching what God is saying? Now go back to higher ground conference last year. What was it? Are you seeing there's a connection somewhere? You need a revelation of Jesus first before the resurrection. This thing is working something. I don't know what God is already speaking to him about the next higher ground conference. But I'm coming back. Because I must be part of the drama. From the revelation of Jesus to the resurrection. I'm waiting for the next one. Now number two. The revelation of the resurrection talks about a people. A person. Jesus. Two. It talks about a people. A people. A people, John 14, 19. John 14, 19. Yet a little while, and the wall seared me no more. Now he's talking about the death, the resurrection. We won't see him because he's risen. But you see me, you have a revelation of me. Because I live. You! So the resurrection is beyond him. It flows to us. Because I live, Jesus said, a people will live. So the revelation of the resurrection, one, reveals a person, Jesus. Two, it reveals a people, the church. The revival we are crying about cannot come without a revelation of the resurrection. <laughs> the things we are talking about, praying about, weeping about, crying about, that we want to see again happen, like it has happened in the past and happening with our fathers in the faith, will take the process of a resurrection. Listen, do you know what happens when they say revival broke loose in a church? Let me make it very simple. Resurrection happened in the church. That's the meaning. There you have another definition of revival. Resurrection. 
Number three, the revelation of re- resurrection. Remember we said one, a person. Two, a people. Hayakai. Three is a period. <laughs> a season comes in a man's life where there's a switch. If you miss the season, you may have to wait for the next season. To everything, there is a season, including resurrection. Ecclesiastes 3 verse 1. I want to show you something. Verse 1 and verse 2. To everything there is a season and a time to every purpose under the heaven. So the church will just get excited. But look at this. Number 2 verse 2. It says a time to be born and a time to die. And what happens after death is the resurrection. I am grateful to God not because I am preaching tonight but I am part of this thing. My life cannot end this month the way it started. I'm not talking of next year. I'm talking of this month. It's impossible. I am as hungry as every member seated here or anyone streaming. Kai, things must change. You know when you are so used to death, you think you are alive yet you are dead. He said, I wake thou that sleepers. He's sleeping, but he doesn't know he's asleep. Arise from the dead. And Christ shall give thee light. Hey, I just saw this. I began to read out that scripture before I saw that. I wake thou that sleepers. I've quoted it. But what happens? Arise from the dead. Lift your hands tonight. In this service here tonight, Pastor Leke prayed that I will re echo it again with your hands lifted up. Everything dead or dying in this season of resurrection, I command that they come back to life. So I've given you the ABC of it, the simplest for you to remember. The resurrection, the revelation of the resurrection, one, reveals a person, two, a people, and three, a period. Household of David and everyone connected and everyone that is in love with what God is doing and about to do in this church. Get ready. This is our season of resurrection. (laughs) Ezekiel 37 is where the drama unfolds. And shows a picture of what happened with Jesus. So we read verse 1 all the way to verse 14. And we'll be able to make it on time. The hand of the Lord was upon me. Hmm. And he carried me out in the spirit of the Lord and set me down. In the midst of the valley. Take note. It wasn't just any point. It was a valley. They don't bury on top. They bury under. And this valley was full of bones. And it cost me to pass by them round about. And behold, I, I. They were, they were very many in the open valley and lo, they were very dry. Ah, very many, very dry. And he said unto me, son of man, can these bones live? And I said, oh Lord God, thou knowest. Again, he said unto me, prophesy upon these bones. And say unto them, O ye dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Now remember he's showing me this scripture and telling me to preach it before Wednesday. Then said the Lord God, unto these bones, behold I will cause breath to enter into you and you shall live. 
and I will lay Sinus upon you and will bring up flesh upon you and cover you with skin and put breath in you and you shall live and you shall know that I am the Lord. What is about to happen to household of David? All the mockers will so run into hiding. And so, what did I do? I prophesied. And that's what he has sent me here to do tonight. I prophesied as I was commanded. Even if some people laugh, I prophesy as I was commanded. I prophesied. Someone said, no, 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 but you are not a prophet. A time comes when the mantle drops upon you. It can drop upon you for a day. I prophesied as I was commanded. And as I prophesied, there was a noise. And behold, a shaking. This is now showing you the drama that happened to Jesus. And behold, bones came together, bone to his bone. I, I, I just heard him. There are things that complete you that are in the hand of somebody else. So it means the right bone may have been here, the left bone may have been there. But as I prophesied, this one came and met this one. Are you following what he's saying? Bone came to bone. Bone came to bone. Bone came to bone. Location. There are allocations for some of you. This is by digression, but I hear him in the spirit very clearly. There are allocations for you that are still in somebody else's hand. Before February is over. <laughs> Wherever, whatever belongs to you is, it will locate you. Hmm. So I prophesied. Hmm. And there was a shaking. And bones came together. So don't, don't worry when you're wondering why are we shouting, why are we shouting. There has to be a noise. It's scriptural. You have heard and heard and heard. Now we will shout and shout and shout. There was a noise. Can I hear this noise from somebody who is experiencing this power of his resurrection? There was a noise and a shaking and bone came to bone. Now, verse 8, And when I beheld, lo, the sinus and the flesh came upon them and the skin covered them. See all the activity taking place at a moment. Then he said unto me, you are not done. Prophesy again to the wind. Prophesy, son of man. And say to the wind, O breath. Come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe upon this slain, Kai Kadai, that they may live. And so I prophesied. As he commanded me. And the breath came upon them. And they lived and stood up. An exceeding great army from a valley. Are you seeing household of David? <laughs> from a valley with bones very dry. Then there arose a great. Not an ordinary army. A great. A great. A great. Ex now by the way. I got it wrong. Exceeding. Great army is great, but now it says exceeding great army. Haven't you read? God is able to do exceeding. That means whatever you think the army is or will be or whatever you think the household of David will come out of this looking like, whatever you think the mercy seat will look like he said no your 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 views are below my capacity if they came alive that would have been okay but they didn't come alive as an ordinary group of men who told you they were an army before they died but the power of his resurrection doesn't take you back to where you were it takes you ahead of where you should have been and cut short the lost time exceeding great army go back to where we began the resurrection a person a people a period 
Let's keep reading. This is the main text for today. Then said the Lord to me, Hi. These bones are the house of David. Behold, they say, our bones are dried. Where do we begin from? And our hope is lost. You may not be a member of household of David watching. He's talking to you too. We are cut off from our parts. From where? Everything already arranged. If they can show it on the screen, I'll ask that they do. Just a picture of what it looked like. And with the eyes of the spirit, you will now see a valley. You will see those, those ions of the seats are bones. If we live here with just the teachings, without the activity, we have missed it. I never discuss the teaching with anybody, but you will know what I'm teaching nobody has taught. And what they taught, I'm not teaching. And what will happen tonight again is another one when the next teacher comes. And what will happen tomorrow? Aye, aye. If you are part of the army indeed, you are not bothered about how God brings the resurrection. Your own is just, I must resurrect. <laughs> and so God will bring somebody like Pastor Leke in 20 minutes and altar call is done. That is, it is cleared. Don't touch it again. Something is happening. Something is happening. He will smile again. You will laugh again. Your best days are not behind you. They are ahead of you. Our generation will see revival again. Shout amen like you are there. And so we go back and see. And you may be wondering why we're taking time to read. <laughs> he said, this is the household of David. They are saying our bones are dried. Our hope is lost. We are caught from the floor. Therefore prophesy. And say to the household of David. Behold, oh my people. Hi, hi. <laughs> I will open your graves and cause you to come out of your graves and bring you to the land of Israel. Do you know what has happened by the incidents? God has just announced the household of David. There is an announcement in the realm of the spirit. You cannot pretend not to know that there is a church whose conference was not to hold. This is all happening as the picture of resurrection. I've never heard anybody teach it connected to resurrection. But see what is happening. You will know I'm the Lord when I've opened your graves and brought you out of your graves. And I will put my spirit. Watch out. There will be manifestations of the gifts of the spirit in the household of David like never before. People will step into where you will have meetings. Miracles will take place without prayer. But except a corn of wheat falls to the ground and die. You know, if the enemy would have known, he wouldn't have crucified the Lord of glory. He wouldn't have been part of orchestrating the fire if he had known that, ah, this fire I brought will just take this church to another dimension and mess my kingdom. He wouldn't have done it, but he's a fool. So get ready. Resurrection is here. I don't know who made it early enough tonight. But I'm glad to let you know. The person that walked into this auditorium, no matter the state of your bones, spiritual bones, material bones, financial bones, family bones, whatever it is, mental bones, whatever the state of dryness may have been, today you step 
into the resurrection. So, there are five things to point out here. And we pray. And before we step down by the leading of the Holy Spirit, and as our pastor allows, there will be certain declarations. They are not written down. They will come from the Spirit. Five things that the Lord showed me from this scripture about the resurrection is one, there must be a valley. <clears throat> <laughs> so the first thing you see is in verse 1 he brought me into the midst of a valley Kai. do you know God was there when Jesus went to the cross no wonder Jesus said why have you forsaken me and the scripture says the psalmist says even if I go to the valley to the depths of the sea, you are there. So God can visit a valley. <laughs> the valley represents the position of the bones. The bones were not just where you can see them. They are in the valley. I'm just reminded now. Pastor Shumakini said he once saw RCCG planted in the valley. They are bones. The valley. In Matthew 25, 5 to 6, we see when a valley or a tomb was visited. Give me verse 6 maybe. 28, sorry, Matthew 28, verse 5. 28, verse 5. And the angel, hey, I, fear not, for I know that you seek Jesus. I'm coming, oh. He's, which was crucified. Verse 6, please, verse 6. He's not here. So he was there before. Kai. He's not here. He's risen. As he said, come and see the place. I announce to you, when they check you where you used to be, they will never find you there again. The valley. I'm unveiling what resurrection is. As revealed from here, a valley. Ay. The power of his resurrection will always lead to a change of position. It may meet you in the valley, but doesn't leave you in the valley. At salvation, as we just had a few minutes ago, the power of his resurrection changes your position from death to life, from darkness to light. You have all of that in John 5, verse 24, 1 John 3, verse 14, Colossians 1, 13. We didn't have to have a teaching for that. That was demonstrated. Kai kananorosh kayai. At the valley of dry bones, as many of us call it, please follow this. This will mean a lot now and after now. At the valley of dry bones, the first thing the power of his resurrection did is to attack the valley. Hmm. But until we acknowledge our state, there can't be a change of state. I 
as I began to hear from Pastor Schumacher Day some of the things that, in fact, the Mercy Conference was allowed, announced so late because it wasn't meant to happen there. Ah. God is saying there is a shift, but we must attack this valley. My sister said, Pastor Tolu, enlarge the place of thy tent. Last year, higher ground conference, people were turned back. The space can't take us. It's not a house fellowship. It's an explosion. <laughs> so what you saw, whether you think it's natural or not, was an attack on the valley. That's it. Is that where we are going back to? Can you see in the eyes of the spirit? Those are bones. That's a valley. That will soon become like the children's church. Don't mind me. I am just speaking as commanded. The things you are struggling to do as at now, very soon it will become your daily expense. So at the power of his resurrection, one of the things that the spirit of God is doing is first to attack your valley. Some of us are too comfortable in the valley. Because we have others in the valley, we think the valley is normal. You know, when you are around abnormal people, you will think you are normal. And those who are Doing greater things, you will think they are abnormal. There must be a switch. I, what I'm seeing is, is, is heavy. What I'm seeing is heavy. A time is coming to be street that is purchased. We are starting from somewhere. A time is coming where I know that's, that, that is the household of David's city. God can bring a city out of a valley. Some of us built our first houses when we were kicked out. There had to be an attack on the valley. Some of us discovered that the anointings and dimensions when we were pressed down. If you want the grape juice, you must crush the grape. God is saying there's a generation waiting for city of household of David. There's a generation. That valley is not my place. The valley. So you can't talk about the power of resurrection or the resurrection without the valley. Secondly, you have the bones. The bones here refer to the state of God's people. So now we are just, we are not looking at church now. We are now looking at us. Let our fathers tell us the things they have experienced. From our daddy Gio to Bishop Oedipo to all of these great patriarchs. Pastor Taiwo Dukoya, all of them. You will discover that we are failing. And you know, if you have other failures around you, you feel that you are okay. <laughs> have you noticed failures are in the same group? And you, I used to be like that. Usually, we are backbiting on those who are doing well. When will you leave the valley of failures? The 
the bones. Some of us are so comfortable. We just come. I just had a testimony. I had a job. It's okay, but it's more than that. We have become so comfortable. We just have a revelation without. Ay, ay. And at the hour of prayer, it wasn't a healing service. Who was there? Peter and John at the hour of prayer. Silver and gold we have not. They've just come from the drama of resurrection. We should be walking as men and women with fire in their bones. Why are you afraid to challenge the norm? The bones are dry. When did we become so conscious about our status on social media? That may be a social valley. When will a generation arise again and say these bones are too dry? The bones were very many, but very dry. Everywhere there is massive increase in church. Everything. I'm, I'm not talking about household. Of, I'm talking about church generally. Massive increase. That doesn't excite me as much because the quantity of the bones is not as important as the quality of the bones. The bones were very many, but very dry. But I speak to somebody here who would dare believe God that came to this resurrection mercy conference. Something is going to happen to the state of your bones. Number three thing we see here is the word. Kabro <laughs> Dabai. As long as you live, you can't remember something this simple. Valley of dry bones. What happened? Valley. Bones. What next? You keep seeing, he says, in verse four, here, the word of the Lord. Hear the word of the Lord. Hear the word from God. We've had this so massively well since Wednesday. The word has been coming. The word has been coming. The word has been coming. I have been let, have every opportunity I've had to connect. I, I was in Unilag this morning. I still got back, still tried to see how I can get a view of what had happened. Connecting to the word. I heard things I've never heard before. I, the word, the word, the word, the word, the word. Hear ye the word of the Lord. This is not a motivational conference. No. This is the word. Don't excite me without the word. But if I see the word, you can't stop my excitement. The word. I'm not teaching you something I owe. It's for you. It's for me. Kai, I have stayed in this state too long. Be careful when people applaud you. It's the same way they can applaud you to your downfall. Lord, what is the state of my bones? And he says, this is the state of your bones. For God does not look like man looks. For me, mercy conference this year is like a retreat. It's now I'm telling you because it's my session. Kai, I, I, I didn't come to eat. Hayabai, kanumbari tabayai. Enough is enough of being at this state. When will the real bonkies again arise? Amen. When will a generation and a nation wake up 
and said, the fathers have done their part. When would we rise up? When will the nation say, we thank God for all the people coming to have crusades, but what is wrong with us? Hear the word of the Lord. Thus saith the Lord, your bones shall live again. Hear the word, the word, the word. So go back and keep hearing. I will do the same. Aye, aye, aye. Aye. I heard again today that it takes 16 times to fully understand the message. So that means even the one I'm preaching, I still need to go back and hear it. Where you know the thing has fully entered you is when you don't need your note. Hear the word of the Lord. The word of the Lord. And the Lord began to speak to me recently. I said, Kai, what's happening to us? We have heard so much from men that we have lost touch with God. Many of us know the traditions of our churches. We don't know the word of God. We don't. But the Bible says in Luke's gospel that they pressed. I think that's Luke chapter 5 verse 1. They pressed to hear the word of God. Do you truly believe this is the word? The number of yeses shows us our challenge. They, they came and pressed. Is that Luke 5? Luke 5, right? And it came to pass that as the people pressed. What is the taste of the word in our generation? Pastor Dele was talking about, no, it's the word, it's the word. I said, aye. We better wake up. That is the word that excites. Is the eye. I said, what's happening to us? You know how you know we have lost touch with the word? We applaud the preacher for the way it is said. And how it is. We are applauding the preacher. It's not the word we came to hear. What happened in the days of Peter? That people will leave all their challenges and sit to hear the word of God. Do we still have as much value for the word? Or has the word lost value because it is, it is in every translation you can think about? Some of us have 50 Bibles at home. What value? Then you hear believers now arguing. The word says, hey, but let's face the fact. Face your dry bones. The value of the word must be restored in our generation for us to walk. Look, men like Eban Robots. Okay, come. Look at our fathers in the faith. Here in this country, for instance. I just wanted to picture old generation, new generation. You see most of them with their Bible. I saw, I have a picture of Evan Roberts. Ay, ay. The man that shook wheels. Their posture normally is with the Bible. Daddy Gio, the same thing. Bishop Oedeko, the same thing. Archbishop Idahosa, the same thing. Now we have too many pictures that have no word. These generals never cared about photograph. In fact, it was said that oh, Evan Roberts, you couldn't get him to take a picture. He's too busy. The fire that is coming from the eyes will damage the camera. So what's the point? <laughs> At 26, a nation was boiling. 26. A Bible school dropped out. Was catching visions for three months continuously every day. What will make a man begin to declare, Give me Scotland or I die? Is it not? I, I need to start asking, Is it the same Bible we are reading? I'm told of one of the stories of the Archbishop that when he just gave his life to Christ, he said, uh, You shall lay your hands upon the sick, they shall recover. Cleanse the leper, heal the sick, raise the dead. 
his pastor who was teaching him, he asked him, sir, do you believe what you just read? He said, yes. He said, ah, you believe it? He said, yes. Do you raise the dead? He said, no. Ah, but you say you believe what you read? He said, yes. Have you tried to raise the dead? He said, no. Ah. So he said, I will take what I've heard. And he started going from street to street. Is there any dead here? Did God ask you to feel bad for him? You shall lay your hands upon the sick, they shall recover. He didn't say pastors. This sign shall follow them that believe. Signs should follow us, we shouldn't be looking for it. I came here with my clothes on, I'm not naked. My clothes followed me. I can't tell you, go and look for what I'm wearing at home. If I say go home to look for what I'm wearing, it means I'm not wearing anything. This sign shall follow them that believe. The word. The word. So don't joke with the things we have heard. Preacher, a member, let's go back and listen to it. Some things were too deep to catch it the first time. I, I heard things, I said, I have not heard this kind before. Deep things. If all we do is clap and go and say we are resurrected, we lie. The word. The word. The word carries life, so contact with the word brings life. John 1, 1 to 5. He said, I'm the resurrection and the life. He went on to say, a time will come where the dead shall hear the voice of the Son of Man, the word. And they that hear shall live. He said that in prophecy. By John 11, he said, Lazarus, come forth. You can't contact the word and remain in a dead state. I didn't say you can't contact preaching. That's not, I said the word. I didn't say your notes. I said the word. Until the word becomes personalized to you. Your own word. That's what brought each bone to themselves. The word located the bone. When the word steps into the valley of dry bones, there is bound to be a rattle. Ezekiel 37 verse 7. A rattle. You see that I prophesied as I was commanded and there was a noise and behold a shaking and the bones came together. Bone to his bone. A rattling. The word. I taught our children this week in our devotion. I said the word of God is our license to life. If you have ever had your license seized, you know that you can be arrested even though you are a licensed driver for the absence of your license. When the police stands, one of the things they are looking for is your license. Recently in the city of Abuja, where we are, I got stopped. They say I was talking on the phone while driving. I said, did you see me on the phone? They say you were looking down. <laughs> and I couldn't argue. And so, what they did to punish me is to take my license. And they say you can go. The same people can arrest you. Somewhere else. For not having the license that they seized. So at the valley of dry bones, before you are allowed to come out of the grave, you must present your license. The word of God is that license. John 14 and I believe verse 19. I hope I have that correct. John 14, yes, verse 19. The world seared me and they will see me no more. 
But you see me because I, who is I? Jesus. Who is Jesus? The word. The word is your license to life. If we remain word empty, that's not household of David because this is a word loaded church. But you can be in the midst of a word loaded church and be word dry bone. The word is the license. All I'm saying is from Ezekiel 37. The valley. What's the next one? Let me hear you screaming. Louder. The third one. The word. The fourth one. The spirit. Ezekiel 37, 5. Ezekiel 37, 14. The spirit. The spirit. Give me verse 5, please. Ezekiel 37, verse 5. Do we have it? Behold, I will cause my breath. If you go and study that scripture and God gives you a deep understanding, breath there is spirit. So he said, I will cause my spirit to enter into you and you shall live. Give me verse 14. And shall put my spirit in you and you shall live. And I will place you in your own land. Out of the valley, to your own land, not to, to another valley, to your own land. And you shall know that I, the Lord, have spoken it and performed it, saith the Lord. The spirit, if that same spirit, thank God for the word. And the words I speak unto you, they are spirit and life. I understand that. But he said, now he's talking about the word, Jesus. He said, if that same spirit that raised up the word from the valley of dry bones dwells in you, that same spirit will quicken your mortal bodies. Ah, to enjoy the power of his resurrection, we must allow the interruptions of the spirit For my words and my preachings were not in the enticing words of man's wisdom, but in a demonstration of spirit and power. The spirit. It is the outpouring of the spirit that qualifies dry bones to come alive. And finally, our time is up, is the prophetic. That's why there has been a lot of amen, amen, amen. It's not a downplay of anything. It's part of the process. And so prophesy, I prophesy. Prophesy, I prophesy. Prophesy, I prophesy. I'm here again to prophesy to somebody here. Before the end of February, there will be a shift in your life. Karabai, kano kabai. Look at it. Between February and November is how many months? How many months? Come on, how many months? Let's say 10. Some of us don't understand mathematics too well, but take January, take December. What do you have? Let me hear you louder. These 10 months for someone will be like a decade. In terms of results, in terms of... Ay, 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 kai, ay. Now what you see that happened at the valley of dry bones as we round up is the hand of God must have also come and gave them speed. He didn't say they came back to life and sat down. He said they came back to life and they arose and exceeded. My brother is here. We will sing that prophetic song. Oh, oh, Luambe, Gloria. Can I have somebody help me, please? If you allow me, the next two minutes is a prophetic sound. Put life in it, please.
someone is dead in spirit by resurrection you are recovering and overtaken by the power of his resurrection That I prophesied as I was commanded. I come from a prophetic lineage. There must be a bit of it inside from time to time. Lift up your hands. Every area where you may have suffered a stagnation representing death, by the power of his resurrection, you are released from that valley in the name of Jesus. He said, you have gone round this mountain long enough. Whatever cycle you may be in, you are moving but no progress. By the power of his resurrection. The resurrection power doesn't leave you in the valley. The resurrection power doesn't leave you at the floor level. The resurrection power brings you out. I therefore decree, every form of movement without progress is terminated here at the Mercy Conference. Some of us, including myself, our spiritual rate is pitiable. The dimensions we should be in is far from where we are by the power of his resurrection. Power, power, kaya by no kai. By the power of his resurrection. For someone, there shall be a shift in your spiritual life. A generation is waiting for some of you, and you are still in the village. A generation is waiting for you and you are still in cycles. A generation is waiting for you and you are still weeping. You who should wipe away tears. I hereby decree by the power of his resurrection in the authority of the name of Jesus, the resurrected Christ. Everyone that is behind schedule by the power of his resurrection, I decree you catch up with schedule in the name of Jesus. And if that same spirit that raised up Christ from the dead dwells in you, he said that same spirit will quicken, quicken, make alive your mother bodies. I decree every lump, every cancer, every fibroid, every stranger in your body, every tumor in your body, by the power of his resurrection, they are melted in the name of Jesus. Whoever may have left you behind and they are mocking. They've left you behind and they are using you as examples. They've left you behind and they are, they, are, they are waiting to rejoice at your downfall. Well, by the power of his resurrection, there will be a change of position. When the spirit of God comes upon a man, comes upon a meeting, things shift. I don't know who I'm speaking to. You have heard the word. The spirit has been injected in you. And you are saying, no, enough, enough. We are a few days to the last day of the meeting. There may never again be in recent times another resurrection. May you point to today, 3rd of February, 2024, as the day where a shift took place. Visions come alive in the name of Jesus. Dead ministries come alive in the name of Jesus. Dead businesses come alive in the name of Jesus. Dead marriages come alive in the name of Jesus. Dead finances come alive in the name of Jesus. I decree so. And when the prophetic came place, the last of the five. There arose a great army. And this army can be likened to Joel chapter 2. The kind of army that we are going to see in our revival. The revival we have been praying for. 
everyone is marching in his ways and none are breaking their rank get ready for it get ready get ready there are people that will be sent into politics there will be a shift people sent into ministry there will be a shift the lord has been telling me of recent while there are other offices of the ministry so prevalent one seems to be lacking the ministry of the evangelist for someone here with a clear call of the ministry of the evangelist in the name of jesus that fire that catches evangelists the fire that makes them restless the fire that is in their bones i decree the same 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 in the name of jesus they will not respect us alone for our teachings they will respect us for the proof as we all leave the mercy conference including myself i'm going back to my assignment with a consciousness of the resurrection because at the valley of dry bones it didn't end at the valley the bones didn't end very dry the bones didn't end as very many there arose a great and mighty army i just heard him raise your hand in the name of jesus christ the giant in you arises from this conference Finally, one of the things that the resurrection, the power of resurrection does, aye, aye. <laughs> you become a risk taker. There are bridges to burn. You think your help is in a man, so you keep looking at him. So, uh, what, what do you think? But today has marked a difference. My father will say this way, he either be Lord of all or not Lord at all. Your generation is waiting. What are you doing? Aye, aye, aye. thank you lord i heard him again listen don't leave this conference like you are still in the valley don't leave this conference like your bones are still very dry i'm talking to you as a person now don't leave this conference as one who didn't hear the word. Don't leave this conference as one who didn't see diverse manifestations of the Spirit and we yet see more tonight. Don't leave this conference as one who didn't receive a prophetic word. There are certain things said today, you know it is you. Rise up from the valley. Get up from that dying state. Step onto higher grounds. Father, we give you the praise and we give you all the glory. Thank you, Father, for the power of your resurrection. We give you the praise and we give you all the glory. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. God bless you.